Hi everybody, this is Madhav here from Remote Marketing and today this is this is something I think about a lot and I say that in every episode but today really is and it's this, you know, standing out in the world today and we're going to talk specifically, uh, you know, with software companies and, uh, you know, with software products, right? It's a lot harder to stand out in the world today. That's a fact. And especially if you're trying to market your product to a very tech savvy audience. Okay. Uh, to give you an example and the, the, the commonness that you see, right? Like now, if you go to any website, right? There's a top bar, you know, at the top. It's an almost, uh, you know, a standard in our industry. There's going to be a home, there's going to be industries, there's going to be um, you know, an industry from there's going to be a pricing thing and there's all of that. And, for, and they're just so standard that often my eyes just skip that bar, you know, skip that top nav bar 99% of the time. You know, it's just, I feel it's just so used to death, right? And then there are obviously things like, you know, this annoying barrage of website notifications on most sites these days, you know, first there's a cookie message, then there's a pop-up to sign up for the email list. Uh, and then there's a notification to allow notifications Chrome and then there's another layer over and over and over again and it's just it's so annoying. So, you know, and even when you take any blog, right, most blogs and you see something like top 10 my marketing trends in 2019, right, or the definitive guide to content marketing, um, etc. I have zero, absolutely zero interest in reading them. And you know why? I will tell you why right now. Because what makes you different? What makes you unique? I see people like you every minute of every workday. Why should I give specific notice to you? Right? And that's when I come across sites like Basecamp and uh, Trello and Vistia. I love Vistia. And they come across as a breath of fresh air uh, to me, you know? So, like, just to give you an example, when I went to Trello's site, and I, I, you know, I, I opened their homepage and it's like, Hmm, no navigational menu bar at the top. This is interesting, you know. Or I went to a blog and there was no way, absolutely no way for me to subscribe to their newsletter. And I was like, this is very interesting, you know. I tried to somehow get inside access and maybe I'll drop their support an email to put me in their newsletter list. Like, this is insane. I will just subscribe to their RSS feed because now I really want to follow their blog. Because there's, if there's no way to subscribe, then I'm guessing that. I don't know. It's just, it's, that's the thing. It's a breath of fresh air. Or even like when someone, let's say, puts their pricing page, like when they have a pricing page and then they've got competitors at the bottom, like a pricing page, which is so critical, you know, when people are evaluating and you add their competitors, that is super interesting. That's like, you're bold, you're raw, you're refreshing, you're going in the opposite direction and you're being rebellious. And maybe that's a good thing sometimes. Right, because sometimes going in the opposite direction of where everybody is going feels like a breath of fresh air, right? And this breath of fresh air is basically what helps a business stand out. And just to kind of, you know, explain this, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a bunch of examples which you will be able to relate to, versus you know, with everybody going this way and you going the opposite side, right? Now. You check out most software companies' blogs. Everyone has a blog these days, just, you know. And it's going to be like top 10 digital marketing trends, top 10 tools for project management, you know, here's how desks of our 20 remote workers look like and stuff like that. And that's just, it's just so used to death right now. Um, doesn't make, uh, like this is not something that would ever interest me. Like I would go to the blog, I'm like, oh God, this is another generic marketing blog, you know, screw that. I'm going to just move out. And then when I see a blog that's focused specifically on a particular niche, right? Like let's say video marketing. That's something nobody covered until Vistia came in and they have dedicated their entire, you know, lives on that, like on video marketing, right? And when they talk about, you know, specific video marketing tactics and what, uh, are going to be the video marketing trends in 2019, I'm going to be like, here's my money. I want to subscribe. I want to read your blog, right? That's the, that's the difference between going the generic way and then 
going this is not necessarily opposite direction but just being different altogether another example is i get i get a lot of uh, you know marketers sending their job uh, applications and most of them are like it's send a job application with a generic cv and you know and with a with a huge email like why we're almost foolish not to hire him right or him or her and i'm just like are you kidding me like this is I, i i see this every day like you've not explained your value to me you're just another marketer who's sending like these generic cvs and cover letters and be like you're the best in the industry and all of that show it to me right and then out of those 500 emails you know we get about marketer from marketers or other talent um uh, other roles that we're hiring for there'd be a person who would email me you know sending their feedback on our website and just general suggestions on improvements free of cost and then right at the end of the me email you know sends in a one line note that they'd love to be considered for the designer role um and that is very interesting to me because if those that feedback and those improvements are actually valuable i would want to at least get on a call with this person right because this person did not go like everybody else they took a very different refreshing approach right another example is everybody gets email, you know cold emails it's just and it's, it's it's annoying right but it works and it's it's part of a lot of marketing teams at least it used to work now i get cold emails like so much that I, it's literally like spam 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 right so you know if you get a cold email with like this very heavily tested email copy it sounds very casual written by this human and there's all of these cringe worthy gifs you know or gifs i don't know um and you know if i get those i'm like immediately spam right but then occasionally very very occasionally i would get an email uh, to be like hey i do a podcast about you know um about marketing remote teams right or remote hires or and i would love to invite you for a 30 minute episode you know and then when i actually get on the call it's 30 minute chat about my experience but towards the end he's going to do like a short uh, you know call out to check out uh, the product right now it's not the best approach but i take an any day over the bullshit he called emails right and plus i i i enjoy fronting my experience um so it you know see that's that's different right like now you you had someone who sending you a cold email with like a heavily tested copy and then there's someone who's inviting you for a podcast which allows you to get on a call with them and then kind of use that opportunity uh and not abusing that opportunity you know they just got one line towards the end and then the last example is um you know you could be running a blog you know with a bunch of freelance writers writing generic bs you know so it could be something like uh how to hire people uh you know uh, geographically like from anywhere or how to um you know send money to brazil you know if you're if you're a payment provider and then these writers will go in and then you kind of look around uh read other people's articles search on google and from whatever information they cover they kind of hash together this really nice post right i'm never going to read that because i know or i can immediately see when a blog is being written by a freelance writer it's just it's such generic bs i can't even tell you right versus someone an industry veteran someone who's been let's say um you know uh, uh let's say a director of talent for t- over 10 years right um them sharing their experiences in like 15 minute video every day and then maybe that video is converted into a podcast maybe that video is put on youtube or maybe that video is used by taken by a ghost writer converted into an article just re- really just taking the valuable inputs from there and then putting it in an article i would definitely read that over you know the generic stuff because this is real stuff that you know that i can learn from and that's why i feel that it's such a breath of fresh air when i see that when i i can immediately see when a, when when content is very uh, it's written by uh, it comes from a lot of experience from the company from the people and then sometimes when the content is actually written by a freelance writer 
right? And and this is nothing against freelance writers. Freelance writers can still talk with an industry veteran and then you know create these uh, these beautiful content pieces. I've talked to so many of these freelance writers who you know get on a call, get some you know feedback or inputs from us, and then you know from two three people and then craft together a great piece. And these are the real rock star. Uh, content writers uh, that are in very very low supply and you know with all of these um, with all of these examples with them kind of going uh, in the opposite direction right that's probably why you see some brands you know build a cult following or build something that just looks so refreshingly appealing to the eye or makes the brand memorable uh, Vistia is such a great example. I love Vistia. Like they're just they're so different. Uh, I also really really like Basecamp because they're always trying to do something differently. Um, you know their website looks so different. They've got very different navbar, none of that. And that's probably and that's not something that you just you know mock up like in a single day or something like that. That's their team taking a step back and rethinking what makes them unique in the sea of many 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 unknowns. Um, so I love, I, I'm going to give a huge shout out. I love brands like Basecamp, Intercom, Trello, Slack, Vistia, ConvertKit. Um, and these are a lot of things that I learned from them and that I want to incorporate as we move forward, right? So please try to take a step back and see that here's how everybody is going everybody's going in that direction can i go in a slightly different direction can i be raw refreshing can i be you know just different in this like i said sea of many many unknowns right i hope you enjoyed this uh, do you agree disagree you can just drop me an email on madhav at remote i'll see you in the next episode bye